Szeretettel köszöntöm az érettségiző diákokat, és azokat is, akik nem idén készülnek érettségire, vagy csak gyakorolni szeretnék az angolt. A mai óra témaköre a World of Work. Egy kicsit rendhagyó órára kerül most sor. Nem csupán csak az érettségi típus kérdéseket fogom átnézni, hanem ez az a témakör, amivel kapcsolatban szeretem, hogyha hasznos tudnivalókat is tanulhatnak a diákok, hiszen ugye bár le fogtok érettségizni, egyetemre mentek, és rips itt lesz a munkakeresésnek az időszaka. Már csak röviden mondom el, miből áll az érettségi előző videókban részletesebben elmondtam, tehát az érettségi középszintű angol szóbeli érettségi vizsgán rövid kérdések, utána következnek a szituációs gyakorlatok és a legvégén a képleírás. És akkor váltsunk is át angolra rögtön. So, we are going to talk about the word of work. And um, this is a very important topic because um, it's in, in our life it's, it's, it has key importance, okay? Especially if you are unemployed. Well, why can you be unemployed? First of all, because maybe you uh, switched a job, uh, maybe you moved to a different country, you're looking for a new job, or maybe you just finished university or college and you finished your internship, which means gyakorlat, okay? And now you are looking for a job. Um, it's really good to prepare to this period of your life because the job market can be sometimes tough and it's full of challenges. So it's nice to prepare both. Um, mentally and, uh, and by some advice and knowledge. Um, what do you do if uh, you're looking for a job? How can you make a research? First of all, you look for job adverts, okay? In newspapers, on the internet, you find a lot of uh, job seeking or job hunters, uh, websites, and um, I can recommend you to create your profile on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional social networking site. It's similar to Facebook, but it's not the same. If you join LinkedIn, if you create your profile, it's from a, for a professional reason, okay? And um, your profile picture must be like um, elegant and professional, look professional. Uh, this is the site when you can make posts about uh, your professional life, your career, your experience. Uh, you can make recommendations and um, you can do some networking. You can uh, get into contact with people from the same career, from the same business and you can exchange some ideas. Um, don't forget that this is the platform where uh, family pictures, private pictures about a seaside holiday are surely not uh, recommended, okay? You don't do this on LinkedIn. When you join LinkedIn, you will find a lot of uh, useful um, ideas of, um, of your business, um, for your interest, and of course, you can look for a job. Um, you can go into settings and you can click on a button uh, to become a job seeker. Of course, when you're looking for a job and um, when you go anyway on LinkedIn or on any social networking sites, you speak nicely about yourself. Saying I'm unemployed doesn't sound nice. So on LinkedIn, it's better if you say I'm open for new challenges. Challenges. Um, if, you found, uh, if you found a good job advert, um, you apply for it. How can you apply? You write your CV um, um, and your motivational letter, okay? But let's not go so far. First of all, uh, you found a job advert, you found many job advertisements. What do they contain? Job description. It's better if you read through very carefully. Employment type. Is it a full-time or a part-time job? What are you looking for? Uh, job requirements. In the job requirements, they will let you know uh, what qualifications you need to apply for this job, like what university degree, what college degree, or what other degree you have, and internship experience. 
this one is a tricky point. How can you have internship experience if you haven't worked for a company? Um, of course, a lot of universities today organize your internship, but still they need three or five years of experience. How can you do that if nobody hires you because you lack this experience? This is a very tricky thing in the job market. Don't be discouraged in this case. Um, try to promote yourself. Say, for example, you don't have three or five years of experience, but you are always ready to learn and you're really open-minded and uh, you're ambitious. And it can happen that the recruiters will have a very good impression of you and they will hire you despite not having those three or five years of experience. Okay, they may ask you to have effective written and oral communication in Hungarian and maybe in English, in German. So um, they will ask you about your linguistic skills. I can tell you now that English is a basic knowledge today in the job market. Everybody speaks English. And I really, I highly recommend you to learn a second language too, at a very good level. Uh, if you're so lucky that one of your parents is from, I don't know, Romania, Slovakia or Serbia, learn that language too fluently. This will be an extra, this will be a perk. Okay, companies like it very much. But don't miss out on German, French, Italian, Polish, Dutch. Learn one of these languages, uh, it will be a treasure in your CV. Now, they might ask you to have a critical, have critical thinking, analytical skills. It can mean a lot of different things. Um, I'm, not going to, and I'm not going into details about it, but when you make your research, um, you will find out more, okay? Flexibility. Flexibility means that you, uh, you are ready to change if it's needed, okay? Uh, flexibility, I could say in Hungarian, rugalmasság. You use it when you do gymnastics and uh, when you go to a company, to work for a company, maybe they will expect you to be flexible in terms of working hours. Or maybe geographically, like you, if, if it's not a problem for you to travel abroad from time to time. And at some companies, you don't need to have flexibility, you know, don't need to be flexible because you work in the headquarters in Hungary. Okay, continuous learning mindset. It's something that a lot of companies require. Forget the thing that now that you have finished high school and university, you have your degree and you're perfect, you know everything you need to know, and now is the time to start uh, your working career and uh, you're finished and ready. It's not like this, forget it. You will learn in your whole life and you have to be ready to learn in your whole life. There are always trainings in every area of the job market. You need training. So be ready for improvement and, and um, be eager for improvement, okay? Teamwork and collaboration. Teamwork is a keyword, a password, if you want to get a job, okay? Be a team player. Um, every company, is looking for somebody who is a team player. Of course, you must be able to work individually as well, but be a team player as well. Now here comes what you need for being a team player, strong interpersonal skills. What does it mean? In our changing world, uh, the job market is also changing and there are new challenges in every area of business. And of course, your university degree is very important, but it's becoming gradually more important to have strong interpersonal skills. Sometimes they call it people skills, okay? Emotional intelligence. <clears throat> so how can we translate it into, uh, how can we uh, explain it in English? If you have strong interpersonal skills, it means that you have a certain le level of maturity. You can handle people. You can sort out conflicts in a civilized way. You can control your reaction to sometimes irritating things. You can cope with some irritating or sometimes uh, difficult situations. You can work under pressure. That's uh, 
another thing. But, but so dealing with people and dealing with customers, you need emotional intelligence, which we call EQ, and there's IQ as well. We could talk about it for hours. Let's get on. Um, and here comes the moment to apply. What I started to mention, now uh, we put it into practice. You write your curriculum vitae or CV. In, in the United States, they sometimes call it resume. Um, it's almost the same. Some coaches will be able to explain you some slight differences between the two. I'm just telling you that you will need this. A CV is a brief outline of your uh, qualifications, professional experience, uh, language skills, computer skills, and some words about your hobby, like your personality. And you write a motivational letter or a cover letter. In the cover letter, you briefly introduce yourself and you explain why you would like to work for that company and um, why you think you are the ideal candidate for the company. Uh, in most cases, in 99.9% of the cases, you will have to hand in your CV in English. You'd better learn that. Maybe in Hungarian too, but um, most probably uh, in German too, or in French, or it depends really on the company, but English is for sure. Uh, CV writing has become a profession today. You can create your own if you are smart enough to design it, but if, um, if you don't think so, you can ask a professional to, to write it for you, to edit it for you. It costs a lot of money, but it's worth, because once you're, you successfully get a job, the money will come back to your pocket, okay? Um, as for CV writing, you will find a lot of tutorials online in forms of videos and online materials, and you can uh, register on a course as well. They are all very successful. Okay, and then you write the cover letter I mentioned that. So this is the phase when you become a candidate. A candidate is someone who's looking for a job, or we call you a candidate when you sit for an exam, or an applicant. Okay, now let's imagine that you're very lucky and you're invited for a job interview. Believe me, you're lucky if you're invited for a job interview. Uh, it needs thorough preparation, okay? Take it serious. Um, again, I have to refer to different coaches who will explain to you in details how to prepare to the job interviews. There are some points that I can mention. You have to prepare with questions. You will be expected to, to ask questions about the company. If you go there and say, no, no, I don't have questions, it's not a good point, okay? It doesn't make a good impression about you. You must be interested in the company. You must make an impression of an ambitious person. You really, you are eager to work for that particular company. You know about them. So you can ask questions. Surely not, not, don't start with the salary, okay? You will discuss the salary later during the interview. You start with questions like, how can you um, contribute to the company's projects? How can you uh, improve yourself? Is there opportunity for self-improvement, for trainings in this company? What are the, the ongoing projects? These are some example questions. Uh, you might be ready to answer the interviewer's questions, such as, for example, uh, some information about your CV. It's very good idea if you take an extra copy of your CV with you to the interview. Um, you have to be able to talk about your uh, strengths and weaknesses. Um, and, and you have to think about it in advance. Don't start like sitting there and uh, I don't know, I don't know about my weaknesses. I don't have weaknesses. Surely everybody has weaknesses, okay? And um, don't say something like, oh, a weakness is I'm always late. Don't say that, okay? So you can mention a weakness that you know about and you are already working on this area to improve yourself. For example, your computer skills are weak, but now you are attending some evening courses of computer science or Excel, Word, PowerPoint, something. So you can mention something like that. And don't be late. So um, in all of these areas, if you have some 
uh, bad habits, you must be ready to improve yourself. You must be ready to get rid of all those bad habits, such as being late all the time or overreacting things. If you want a good job, you have to train yourself in this area. Okay, strength and weaknesses. Your strengths are your qualities, okay? Everybody knows what are their good qualities. Maybe, I don't know, you, you are hardworking, you can work hard even under pressure. Uh, or you are an empathic um, team player. There are various things to say. There are sometimes more than one occasions for a job interview. Not just one, but a set, there is a second turn and a third turn in some companies. At some other companies, it's just, this is just one. Now, once the job interview is over, uh, you go home and the second day it's a good idea to, the, the next day, the following day, it's, it's a good idea to write a thank you letter, like you had a nice time at the job interview and you're looking for the answer. It's a good idea. Um, don't expect, expect an answer within less than one week. If they do, you're very, very lucky. Sometimes in two weeks or three weeks times you will get an answer, a feedback, with a feedback. Uh, but not every company gives a feedback. And what I can tell you here, there are a lot of reasons for be discouraged at this moment, but uh, you have to know that this is pure business. You have to keep on doing, you have to press on to reach a goal. And if some of the job interviews you took part in are not successful, don't give it up. Okay, um, so once you get the job and you sit down with a friend and you tell about your job, you can mention some things like it's a full-time or a part-time job. Is it a white-collar job or a blue-collar job? Is it highly skilled or semi-skilled? Are you doing a physical work or are you a laborer? Is it a web-paid job? Um, what's your salary? Well, we don't really talk about our salaries. We can refer to it, it's very good or, or, or satisfactory. You can get the wage that you get weekly. You can talk about the allocations, the extra money or extra uh, things that you get with your salary. For example, you get your salary and you get lunch tickets every month. Uh, that's a very nice thing. Is the job demanding? Uh, that's a little negative or challenging? That's more positive. Or is it a tedious, monotonous job or interesting, of course? How about the work atmosphere? Um, are your colleagues nice people? Can you work in a team with them? Or um, it can be an open air office, which is very stressful for a lot of people. You have to cope with that. Is it a nine to five job, which means you work eight hours a day? Uh, flexi time, which means you don't have, there is no fixed time in the morning when you arrive, but you have to spend altogether eight hours at the workplace, so this is flexi time. Shift work, do you work in shifts, do you do shifts, um, which means one week you are in day shift, the next week you are in night shift. Musakban, uh, dolgozni. Does the job involve traveling abroad, uh, handling customers, uh, talking to people in German all day long. Uh, do you ha uh, what about the working hours? Do you have to do overtime? Um, so there are very, uh, there, there is a great variety of questions that you can discuss. Now all these expressions and vocabularies can be involved, can be, can be used when you answer short questions like what is an ideal summer job for a student, what job would you like to have in the future, how can you apply for a job, or in a situation you're looking for a summer job as a student and you talk to um, a person in a job agency, you explain what you would like to have, what is ideal for you, and you can get a picture showing a businessman and a hairdresser, for example. You can talk about the differences, the different work, working conditions. Um, uh, if you prepare with all of the things that I mentioned to you, uh, you will be able to pass this exam very well. So, after all, what I can tell you guys is um, keep on learning, practicing, prepare for your future. You can never stop, start too early. So, good luck with your studies. Thank you for your attention. See you later.